No one is a perfect player. Whether it's a lack of basic fundamental skills, an extremely feast or famine playstyle, or just a bad champion pool, we all have something that makes it harder to climb. League is a really complicated game. From mastering individual champions, learning to play different matchups, and how to work with your team and against the enemies, it's hard to even know where to look to start improving. A lot of people just wind up grinding their face into the wall of solo queue and after hundreds of games, end up right about where they started in their season. But hopefully, we'll be able to address some of the broader issues to give you a good starting point for improving this year in this video. I'm Crumbs, and today we'll be going over our top lane guide for Season 13. But before we get to the main course for today, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and our other content like this are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and they're available 24-7, so it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your ProGuides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now, let's get to the guide. The first thing to talk about for being better at top lane is wave management. Really, this is a mandatory skill for getting good at any lane, but it's especially impactful in the top lane. Managing the wave is one of the most fundamental skills in the game, but because it's so basic, it's really easy to go on autopilot and just stop thinking about what you're doing. The result is that you're not building as much of a lead as you should when you're a stronger champion and putting yourself in nearly unplayable situations when you're on the weaker side of a matchup. First, let's talk about wave management as the stronger laner. Of the two, this is definitely the easiest to manage. But again, due to people just going on autopilot, it's really easy to fall into some bad habits when you feel like you can bully your foe. A lot of people have the exact same cookie cutter way of playing when in this position. They just go in for super aggressive trades every time they have cooldowns up. In a game where top lane was just a permanent 1v1, this would definitely feel oppressive for your foe. But League is not a 1v1 game. Junglers are something you always have to take into account. In a perfect world, if you're the stronger laner, your jungler would recognize that and play around you. He'd be there ready to counter gank for an easy 2v2 win. But it's not a perfect world. Unless you're playing at the very top of the ladder, you can't really expect the majority of junglers to have perfect pathing every game. There's also the jungle matchups to consider. If your jungler is a more of a scaling pick and the enemy jungler is one that either clears super fast or just clears a few camps before looking to gank, like Elise, you can't really expect your jungler to be there for you. Regardless of the reason, remember that it's never your jungler's obligation to bail you out. Yes, a good jungler knows to help laners fix waves and it's probably something they should do, but they don't have to. The only one who is absolutely responsible is you. So with all that being said, back to the main point. If you're constantly going in for trades, you're going to inevitably cleave the minions with your abilities, causing the wave to push to your enemy side of the lane. Even if you're not AoEing the minions on accident, you have to be careful about going for trades. When you auto an enemy or use a single target ability on them, nearby minions will hit you. When enemy minions hit you, and your minions are still hitting the enemy minions, this is also going to cause the lane to push. This isn't to say you can never go for trades, you just need to be mindful of when it will take the lane from a neutral state to pushing to your opponents. So, what should you do when you're a stronger laner than your foe, but you don't think you can rely on your jungler to shadow you if you're constantly shoving in your enemy? The best thing to do in that case is to set up a freeze on your side of the lane. Doing this isn't really that hard at all. The easiest way to get a freeze is to build up a push to the enemy turret and time the crash with the next minion wave. If you pull this off, the result will almost always be the wave bouncing back to your side of the lane. Once this happens, your goal is to posture aggressively, zoning your opponent from CS, and in some cases, even from XP range, depending on the matchup. Since the wave is on your side of the lane, even when you're moving up to zone your foe, you're not super overextended. In fact, most of the time, you won't even be at the halfway point in the lane. If done right, there's really nothing your opponent can do to break the freeze. They're forced to call for their jungler to come bail them out. But as we said before, that's not always a reliable tactic. Yes, it should happen, but if it doesn't, you can quickly build up a huge CS lead. Remember, a kill is worth about 3 minion waves, minus the cannon minions. You may not be farming champion kills, 
but when you flame horizon your opponent by 20 minutes, you'll basically be as strong as if you did. Now let's say you're on the other side of the coin here. You're the weaker champion in the lane. What can you do to force the wave to go in your favor? Ultimately, the answer is not a lot. That's sort of the point of being the weaker laner. You don't really have much agency in doing things to make the lane suddenly good for you. But there's definitely something you can avoid doing. Just like stronger laners can mess up wave management by accidentally AoEing the minions while trading, weaker ones can do the same when trying to get some CS. You're playing Nasus. Say the wave is in a perfectly neutral spot in the middle of the lane. You really want to get some last hits, but your opponent is between you and the wave. You throw out an E. You get the 1 CS, but also inadvertently cause the lane to push to the other direction because you also hit the other two healthier melee minions. Now the wave is pushing to your enemy side, and the lane just got way, way harder to play. As we talked about from the strong side, you're now in a spot where the only way you can break your foes' freeze is to get your jungler to bail you out. But that's not something you can always rely on. So, to avoid this, simply don't use AoE abilities to greed for CS. An even better thing is baiting your foe into ruining the lane for themselves. Again, reflecting on our earlier points, if you can make your opponent use an AoE ability on the wave or even bait them into attacking you and drawing aggro from the minions, you can force them to push the wave to your side. Obviously, be a bit careful when doing this. If you try too hard to let them trade on you, you may end up too low to even farm or just straight up dying. One more important thing is what you do with waves when your opponent dies or goes for a reset. A lot of people take their opponent being out of the lane as a chance to last hit and get some CS. This may feel like the right play in the short term, but if your foe comes back before you can crash the wave, they may end up with a freeze off of it, putting you right back into a losing spot. So try to calculate how much time you have before your enemy is back, and make sure you prioritize getting the wave into the turret before they are. Very closely related to wave management is going for resets. This is a very basic concept, but so many people don't play for resets. Let's say you're farming for 8 minutes. You have a 30 CS lead on your foe. They go back and you don't. They come back to lane with full HP and mana, as well as the items from the recall. You may be ahead in gold overall, but now you're way weaker than them, and the longer you take to go back, the more they close the gap. Eventually, they'll pass you up, either in CS or by forcing a fight and killing you since they have more stats. The simple rule is that if your foe goes back, in most cases, you need to match them to keep up with their buys. Okay, the next thing you'll want to work on is altering your champion pool. Not every part of being a good laner has to do with your actual laning skills. Picking the right champions for different situations can have a huge impact on your odds of winning the game. If the enemy top laner is Malphite, and your team already has 3 AD champions, and you only play AD Bruiser's top lane, it's gonna be really hard to win teamfights later on if you don't snowball super hard and close that game out fast. And, given that you're picking what is likely a bad matchup even early on, that's gonna be hard. Having a well-balanced champion pool gives you more chances to get really strong counter lanes so you have a lot more agency in the early game, as well as the ability to pick to tie together team compositions. It can be tempting to pick hard carries every single game, but it's good to also be able to swallow your pride and go for a more team-oriented pick when your team is already so heavily geared towards 5v5s. The last thing we'll talk about when it comes to improving as a top laner is working with your jungler. I know I made a point of saying you can't always rely on your jungler, but that's why this is the last section. It's not something you can always do, but when you do have a cooperative jungler, you can very easily build up leads and close games out fast by making plays with them. This may sound like a very obvious thing, but trust me, I've played jungle enough to see top laners that just refuse to cooperate. They just want to play their own solo wolf style, but then immediately cry about jungle gap and when they die to ganks, do not be that guy. If you're in a matchup where you know you can easily dive your foe with the help of your jungler, say that. Start building up a slow push and ask them to come for a dive. You'll be surprised at how easy this is to pull off. If it's a matchup where diving is not so easy, then instead of having your jungler come to you, you should coordinate a play with your jungler on the rest of the map. You can call for Rift Herald, invade the enemy jungler, or even go for a three-man gank down in the mid lane. Obviously, plays like this need to be made with a bit of discretion. You don't want to roam so long that you're giving your lane opponent too much breathing room. This is something you'll have to learn to measure over time. It's also not something you can do on every champion. 
It's a lot easier for a champion with crowd control like Maokai or Camille to go for a roam, since they can all but guarantee kills, than it is for somebody like Fiora. Well, that about wraps things up for our top lane guide. Thank you so much for watching. I hope these basics put you on the path to becoming a better player. Remember, if you want some more in-depth tutorials, you can always hit up our coaches over at ProGuides.com. And one last thing before you go, feel free to check out our Discord. The link for that is in the description box below. We'd love to have you as a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck on the Rift, and may the LP gods smile down upon you.